Hey, just letting you know that this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. I'm gonna try and make a wildlife documentary with basically no budget, no gear, and no wildlife. I've been obsessed with watching nature documentaries and wildlife films since I was a kid, and there is something about that moment where the music and the visuals on screen and everything just lines up perfectly to give you this gut punch of emotions that is just so incredible about them. So I wanna see if I've got what it takes to create something like Planet Earth on BBC or Our Planet on Netflix and actually make people have that same feeling. But there's a little bit of a problem. See, these wildlife documentaries usually have massive crews of like highly skilled wildlife filmmakers and massive budgets and like insane gear, like gyro stabilized cameras that are attached to like helicopters or cars, purpose built slow motion rigs, ultra high definition and ultra high sensitivity night vision cameras, really expensive drones, and even robot versions of animals with cameras instead of eyes. And obviously, I don't have any of that stuff. I mean, I've got a small drone, I've got a pretty decent camera and a decent couple of lenses, but really, I don't think I'm gonna be getting anything too impressive with that stuff. But like, even if I could, I don't really have any of the animals that I want to include in this thing in my local area. You know, stuff like cheetahs and elephants and bears and all that cool stuff. I mean, I do have like deer, but like I said, this is pretty much the most impressive shot you can expect from me with my gear. So the question is, how do you make a wildlife documentary without any wildlife? Well, that is where Storybox comes in. They reached out to me and they said, well, why don't you just try using only our stock footage and make a wildlife documentary that way? And I thought, hey, that's a great idea. So now's a great time for me to tell you a little bit more about Storyblocks. They have an incredible library of royalty-free stock footage that you can use for personal and professional projects. So I'm gonna try using that stock footage. But they also have sound effects, after effects templates, and so much more. It's really affordable, and if you use the unlimited plan like I do, you get unlimited downloads, which honestly is insanely good and is gonna come in super handy for me in this video. But they've also recently launched an initiative called Restock, where they've hired specific creators to build new collections for underrepresented people and communities and to portray them in an authentic light, which is something that the world of stock footage has really been missing up until now. Personally, I think that's great and it really just shows what a great brand Storyblocks actually is. So you'll be seeing a bunch of their clips throughout this entire video, but you can find out more and sign up for a subscription yourself by clicking the link that is down below or by heading to storyblocks.com forward slash Tom Carroll. Trust me, you're gonna love what they've got. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a fake trailer for a fake nature documentary. Not a whole feature length thing, cause I'm just one guy, using only stock footage from Storyblocks. Then when it's done, I'm gonna send it to the community and I'm gonna ask them to rate it between one and five based on if they actually had some like emotional reaction to it. If they did, I'm gonna say it's a success and maybe I got a future in the wildlife film industry. And if they didn't, then I'm gonna take it as a sign that I should never go anywhere near wildlife filmmaking ever again and all my hopes and dreams are crushed in front of me. So let's do this. But first, I need to find out what actually makes one of those really good nature documentaries actually really good. So I went over to Instagram and I asked you guys that exact question. Okay, so I want to ask you, if you watch any of these like nature documentaries, like wildlife documentaries or anything, what is it about them that makes them so good to you? Literally anything about them, what is it? Just let me know. And you guys came back with some really good answers. A bunch of stuff that I didn't even think of. Here's what I've got as the ingredients for a good wildlife documentary. So first up, you got narrative, which is like an actual story going on. Then there's visuals like epic, unbelievable camera work and beautiful shots. Then a load of you said time lapses, then music and sound design. And then last up is narration. And actually one specific narrator, David Attenborough, who for those who don't know, is essentially royalty for anybody that watches nature documentaries, which should be super easy for me to figure out how to get into my trailer. Okay, so now that I have like the recipe for making this video the way I want, it's time for me to just start doing it. I'm gonna start with the music because I think that's what I want to edit to and it's probably the thing that's gonna have the best chance of making you lot all emotional and maybe even cry. So I'm gonna watch a few different like Planet Earth trailers to figure out the type of vibe of music I'm looking for. Then I'm just gonna find a track on some different music sites that I use. So it's time for me to put my editing cap on and uh, just get started. All 
Alright, so I found myself a good music track that is making me emotional, so it might make you emotional too. So I now need to move on to the main part of this and head into Storyblocks' library and then find all the footage that I'm going to use to make you lot cry. When I was doing this, I wanted to focus on that first thing on the list, narrative. So I wanted to find clips that maybe had something to do with each other, like maybe these two giraffes that are meeting each other in one clip, and then in another clip, it's two giraffes smashing each other in the face. You see, there's a nice little story going on. So I wanted to sprinkle these types of things throughout the entire edit. So then once I got all of my clips, I took them into my editor and just started cutting them together with the music. Okay, that took me way longer than I thought it was gonna take me, but I think I've got it to a pretty good place now and it's making me feel a similar way to how like the Planet Earth trailers and stuff make me feel. So I think it's time that I move on to something else on the list, sound design. Which means I get to play around with something that I've wanted to do for a really long time, Foley. Foley is when sounds are added to the video and it's a massive part of nature documentaries because a lot of the time sequences are shot without any sound because the crew might be using loud helicopters or drones or cars or their cameras might have massive long lenses so they're set up so far away that the mics just can't hear anything or something they're filming might make such a small amount of sound that it just doesn't even register. So using lots of weird techniques and random objects, sounds are added back in, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Right, I've got all of this random stuff here and I'm gonna set up this microphone and I'm gonna watch the video back on my phone and then try to recreate some of the sounds that these animals make with this stuff. sound effects. Okay, so the sound effects are now in the edit and honestly, I'm pretty impressed at my ability to make elephant noises. And I reckon you're gonna be pretty impressed too. So what this means is that there is now only one thing left on that list to get for this edit. A narration from David Attenborough which sounds pretty tricky, but honestly, I reckon I've got it covered. Just give me one second. <clears throat> it's ringing. Davey boy, how's it going, mate? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Look, I've got a little favor to ask of you. Would you be down for recording a little narration for a little video I'm working on? Oh, that's great to hear. Okay, look, here's what I'll do. I'll send you over the script in like a couple of minutes. And then if you could get it recorded for me and sent over in like five or 10 minutes, that would be smashing. Great, all right, Dave. Yeah, look, I'll chat to you soon, all right? Yeah, you take care too, mate. Bye-bye. All right, well, now that that's sorted, uh, I'm just gonna wait for him to send it over, then I'm gonna chuck it in the edit, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send the finished trailer over to the tribe on Discord, which, if you haven't joined the Discord yet, you really should. There's way more chances to get involved in videos just like this one, and it's just a good time all around. But all right, it's probably time that I actually share the finished trailer with you. So, let's roll the trailer. wondrous life of all shapes and sizes. From the unbelievably small to great giants roaming their lands. Forming complex relationships and creating miraculous events. An intricate balance of wonder and awe. From the deepest depths of the oceans to the luscious heart of the rainforests. Our planet is a spectacle to behold. This is a nature documentary of our natural world of nature on our blue planet Earth 2.
And there it is. Honestly, all jokes aside, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I mean, considering I had no wildlife and I made a lot of those sound effects with my mouth, it turned out pretty well. But I mean, maybe one area that needs a lot of improvement is the title of the fake documentary. So you lot should leave a comment down below with your better titles for this fake documentary. But okay, it's not actually down to how I thought it went, it is down to what you guys thought. Okay, so when I sent the video to everybody on Discord, I also asked them to rate it from one to five, with one being the lowest emotional response and five being a massive emotional response. And I just did all the calculations and I'm about to press enter on them. So we have a grand total score of 3.2. Which, okay, is not like the biggest score, but on a scale of one to five, I reckon 3.2 is pretty respectable. So I am gonna call this a massive success. So because of that, that means two things. One, you can create a nature documentary without any nature around you. And two, I might still have a chance at being a wildlife filmmaker when I grow up, which is pretty exciting. And I don't have to watch my hopes and dreams be crushed in front of me, which is always a great result. All right, and that is it for this video. This was a really big experiment for me. This is totally different from the videos I usually do. So massive thanks to Storyblocks for giving me the chance to do this and massive thanks to you for watching it all the way through. I have a bunch more videos coming very soon over the next few weeks. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and hit that like button to let YouTube know that this was a successful experiment. And with that, I'll see you in the next one, my friends.